Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Welcome to New Center's Political Brew, the first of the brand new year of 2020. I hear it's an election year. Have you heard anything about that? <laughs> Not a word. <laughs> Phil Harriman, John Richardson, good to see you after our holiday break. Uh, let's begin with uh, the impeachment matter, which, of course, remains in limbo because the Senate has not set rules. Uh, Senator Susan Collins told New Center's Don Carrigan this past week uh, that it's wrong for party leaders or rank and file senators to already be declaring how they are going to vote on impeachment. Let's listen to what she had to say. After all, each of us has to take an oath in which we swear to render impartial justice. I don't see how you can be faithful to that oath if you've already prejudged the outcome of the trial as senators, many senators, regrettably, on both sides of the aisle have done. Uh, Senator Collins did not name names, but it's clear she's referring to leader Mitch McConnell, to Lindsey Graham, who has come out pretty clearly, says, I don't need to see any more evidence. Um, will her words have any impact on how Mitch McConnell agrees to conduct the trial? Uh, Phil, what do, you, what do you think? Does she have a chance to move this process? I think, I think she does for the very reasons that she has stated. This is a judicial proceeding where they're supposed to act as independent jurors, and she can... Uh, identify by their own words that you have not demonstrated impartiality and in order to uh, neutralize that I think she has a fair amount of influence to say I want to see more witnesses I want additional information whatever it may be that will get to a fair outcome and John if you get four Republicans to put pressure on McConnell and you might you've got Lisa Murkowski of Alaska Senator Collins expressing these views maybe Mitt Romney maybe Lamar Alexander join in I think that's the four, and I think she's, of course, one of them, and she's telling, I think, her leader, Mitch McConnell, uh, look, uh, this is a warning to you. You are not uh, giving me what I think I need to make a good decision, one based on the oath that I'm about to take, and I think that's what she did today uh, when she made that statement, and uh, my, my sense is that Mitch McConnell better take uh, note of uh, her, her concern. It has been one year now since Governor Jana Mills took office, the Democrat who succeeded Republican Paula Page. Uh, John, what grade do you give Governor Mills? I give her an A minus. I mean, I, here's a woman who passed a budget without raising taxes, without taking money out of the surplus. We now have a very healthy uh, rainy day fund of $1.6 billion, and uh, she's put back money into the municipalities so that property tax relief can be a real issue um, on the local level. I think she's done a great job. What do you think, Phil? Well, if she does uh, create my property taxes to go down, she'll get an A-plus <laughs> from, from me. That remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah, that remains to be seen. But uh, that aside, I would give her a solid B. I think the way she uh, came into office, her inauguration set a tone uh, that was a wide path, covered the entire state of Maine, people from all uh, backgrounds and political stripes. I think she's done a great job of being the spokesperson and the ambassador to our state. Her policies, whether it's on the climate change initiative or the spending that's in the new budget, these are things that I think she needs more time to have them come to fruition to see if they really are going to move the needle of Maine in a different direction. Yeah. One year is just one quarter of a term. So, yeah, right. all right. Uh, turning to some international affairs, uh, in recent days, President Trump ordered an airstrike that took out uh, one of the top Iranian military leaders, Qasem Soleimani. Senator Angus King, among other U.S. senators, uh, said, yes, this is a bad guy, but we also want to hear from the administration about uh, whether this, to prove to Congress that this attack was meant to prevent a legitimate threat. Why act now? Phil, what do you think? I, I think Senator King is exactly right. For him to say on one hand he's a bad individual, another to say, show me what other harm he was about to perpetrate on, on Americans, I think is a, is a very valid question. But I, I also think um, to take this action was a pretty courageous act by the president to pinpoint where this individual was and to put a missile in his vehicle pretty extraordinary. I hope that's the type of homeland security we have in place right here in America. John? Well, our American military forces deserve great credit Absolutely. for what they were able to do and to limit any kind of uh, collateral uh, you know, attack here. My concern is the timing. Uh, is this seems like it's politically motivated uh, to help the president just before the impeachment process. I would want to know what was the compelling reason why it had to be, ha it had to happen now. This is something the president's been in office, what, three years? And this right. man has lived uh, for three years 
uh, while this uh, President Trump has uh, been in charge. What was the compelling reason, as you described it, uh, for the attack at this moment, especially considering that the Middle East is white hot right now? All right, lots more to talk about on Political Brew this morning. We'll do that in the next hour. New Center Maine is back after this.